XRP, XRP, XRP. The Bulls are getting ready to run out the gates, family. Can't you feel it? Hi, Vibe Assets. Welcome back to today's show. I got a good one for you today. You know every time that you click on this channel, the content is going to be bullish. Go ahead and give me a follow on my Twitter page at High Vibe Assets. Without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off today's show. The fact that there is a global reserve currency coming, that there's a financial reset, and then you miss the mark, I think... Well, so sir, lay it on us. You got three minutes. Okay, today is going to be the day that Alex Jones is going to announce XRP, global reserve currency. It's the fourth one down the line. It's not so shiny. I think it's being manipulated by by force, to be quite honest with you. But XRP, make no mistake about it, will be the global reserve currency. I'm questioning uh, that the players in the digital asset space don't have a choice, um, that they have to comply with the rules. But once again, Congress has never given you a framework for regulating digital assets. Where are you pulling that one from? With all respect, sir, we disagree on this. Oh, I can see we disagree a lot, Chairman, because we're not giving you authority. You're just taking it. I think that's the best part of the issue right now. With all respect, Congress painted with a broad brush when they set up the SEC. And I quote Thurgood Marshall, which is one of the greatest. Congress painted with a broad brush in 1933 and 1934, not in 2023. We've not touched that. It's a new industry. One last quick question. Two committees working hand in hand on a joint legislative product like this is unprecedented. And I believe it vastly increases our chances of getting it right. Why is legislation needed? The SEC and the CFTC have created an impossible situation where the same firms are subject to competing enforcement actions by the two different agencies. Absent legislation, our regulators are only pushing entrepreneurs, developers, and job creators offshore out of the U.S. system. We have a responsibility to protect our constituents There are glaring gaps in consumer and investor protections, and regulation by enforcement does nothing to fill that gap. And contrary to arguments by some that the problem is simply nonconformity or noncompliance, it's much more complicated than that. Digital assets are here to stay. Uh, This ecosystem has been denied legal clarity for too long, and both market participants and consumers are worse off because of it. We have a market that lacks clarity, and we have a duty to create regulatory, a regulatory environment that allows responsible innovation and responsible consumer protection to sit side by side with appropriate legal clarity. We need that innovation here in the United States. If we don't act, if Congress doesn't act, the rest of the world will. The Europeans are ahead of us in a market structure bill. Uh, the UK uh, regime is ahead of us. They've provided legal clarity while we have not. We need to do our work, and it starts here in this subcommittee with these members. And I want to thank this panel uh, for their expertise in bringing bring forward uh, ideas on how to protect consumers and ensure innovation happens here. That XRP and Ripple are sort of tied together, and that they, you know, XRP could consider it an unregistered security. Um, what would you say to them? Well, it, it's pending litigation, so I'll probably be a little bit. Uh, you know, muted on the topic. Uh, suffice it to say, you know, we don't think it has merit. Uh, you know, these are people who didn't buy XRP from us. Uh, you know, we also don't believe XRP is a security. Uh, I think, you know, one of the poignant arguments in my point of view is, you know, if I went back to the office and said to the team at Ripple, hey, we're shutting down, XRP trades on 130, 140 exchanges around the world. XRP would keep trading. So you're like, wait a minute. Okay, so if it's a security, it's a security of what? Uh, it's not a security of Ripple. You know, it, it doesn't give you the rights to dividends or ownership of Ripple, the company. We, we have shareholders of Ripple, right? We raised a Series A financing, a Series B financing, uh, and we own a lot of XRP, but they're, they're two separate things. At the same time, uh, we've seen recently Block One uh, had the hammer come down on them from regulators. They uh, were uh, basically said that they were selling an unregistered security. Um, $24 million. Just it's interesting you call that a hammer. They raised $4 billion and they... <laughs> yeah, it's a light hammer. Dollars. It's a light hammer. <laughs> <laughs> you and I have a different judgment. Yeah, maybe it's a, a, maybe it's a, a fly swatter. Toy hammer. <laughs> um, uh, either way, so what's the difference between Block One and their token EOS uh, versus you know what you guys are working on? Well, I think one really important distinction is the XRP ledger existed before Ripple, the company. 
you can, you know, it's a public blockchain. You can go back and see kind of transactions zero, one, two, three. You can see when Ripple was incorporated in the Secretary of State in California. Uh, it, Ripple didn't create the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger had utility prior to Ripple's existence. Uh, you know, certainly we are an interested party in the success of the XRP ledger for sure. We own a lot of XRP, uh, but it's a little bit like saying you know Exxon owns a lot of oil. That doesn't make oil a security. <laughs> Exxon's clearly interested in how to you know we can argue about the health of the you know I'm not here to debate c carbon emissions. Climate crisis. <laughs> you want to get into that? No, no, this is an example I wanted to choose decide. here, but <laughs> suffice it to say, Exxon cares a lot because they have a lot of exposure to a in this case, commodity called oil. So I do think, as you say, I think it's a pretty bellwether case at this point. And we talked about, you know, the, the Howey test is this orange grove for a Supreme Court case from the 40s. You know, I think that the ripple test may be what we look at in the future. And, you know, th there are a lot of facts and circumstances that can be unique. But for ripple and what the SEC is trying to do, I, I do think it's just the SEC trying to overreach the statute. And again, Congress gives the SEC power. The SEC can't just go take power. Congress has to pass laws that say, here's the framework. And in this case, what we're really talking about is the 1933 Securities Act, which created the SEC, which said, if there's an investment contract, later on the Howey test. Look, it, we are very confident, uh, as evidenced by the fact we filed summary judgment. We think, again, the facts are clear. That we think the law is on our side, so we, we want to get to that resolution. Um, but I do think it's important for the whole industry, because if if the SEC is going to be the regulator of all crypto, and again, Gary Gensler, the current chairman of the SEC, has said he views virtually all crypto as a security, that's really going to change crypto in the United States, which is the largest economy in the world. You know, I think we all should care that we're able to uh, continue to innovate on these technologies and uh, build solutions using these technologies that really can make the economy more efficient. And so looking at either side of, of how this ruling may turn out, I mean, if the, if the judge rules with the SEC and deems XRP a security, what does that mean for the larger industry? Well, I mean, for Ripple, I, uh, I think for Ripple, we're already operating in a world, it's almost as if we have lost the lawsuit simply because you don't have XRP trading here in the United States for all intents and purposes. Uphold is one exchange still allows trading of XRP, but other than that, everyone else halted trading here in the US. So I think if we prevail, we'll now have more liquidity in the XRP ecosystem and the largest economy in the world. We think that's good for everybody. It also, I think, really sets a tone for other cases the SEC is pursuing now. And they've been quite aggressive, as I think has been you know, kind of well reported uh, in their kind of overreach and some of the letters that have gone out that even congressional leaders have reached out to the SEC asking for explanation. Uh, if, if it doesn't go Ripple's way, I think Ripple can continue to grow our business. It'll just be largely a non-US business, which would be unfortunate. And I think uh, it would give the SEC... I'll tell you a very quick, funny story. I'll keep it short. I was in the Middle East last fall, and we were meeting with customers. I have a, a, one of the Ripple team members who's based there. It's really early in the morning. My time zones are all screwed up. We're meeting the CEO of a payments company. And uh, you know, the employee from Team Ripple says, well, why don't you give an update on what's going on Ripple? And I start talking about the SEC. And after the meeting, he very delicately says to me, no one gives a shit. And his point was, if you're not in the United States, you know, the, the governments in Abu Dhabi, governments in Switzerland, Singapore, uh, UK, Japan, they provided the clarity to how they view and categorize digital assets, and they don't care that the United States SEC has a viewpoint that is, you know, pending in court. Thank you so much. It, it's funny. You said we've moved on past Silk Road. Yeah, it's a long time ago, but there's a lot of members of Congress that still think of this in terms of Silk Road. Yeah. And when you can say over two years, first off, my, my position's uh, very clear. XRP is not a security, all right? Uh, but even if you want to do this, you want to have this discussion, the SEC, uh, my frustration is you probably have heard <laughs> very directly, you brought up in a very nice way. Maybe you should be doing this job and I should be doing that one because I'm not going to be so nice. Over two years is not only a problem, it is absolutely unacceptable. Because what this does is entrepreneurs like you and everybody else on this town hall, you start looking elsewhere. You, money will go where it's easiest to flow. And the more the government puts in obstacles, and, and one of them is just inaction, uh, the, the less opportunity we have to position the U.S. as the leader.
We already know in the U.S. and in many other jurisdictions that three quarters of the market are not ICOs or not what would be called securities, even in the U.S., Canada, and Taiwan, the three jurisdictions that follow something similar to the Howey test that we've talked about. Three quarters of the market is, is non-securities. It's just a commodity, a cash crypto. Um, so you'll hear debates about initial coin offerings and what's a security and what's not a security. Relevant, relevant and important debate, but for three quarters of the market, it's not particularly relevant as a legal matter, as a regulatory matter. If a, digital, if, if a digital asset activity occurs on the spot market, it's not a security, it's not a leveraged retail commodity product, then there is no CFTC or SEC regulatory authority over that product. There is only CFTC enforcement jurisdiction. How large is that universe? It is large, and I base that on two key assumptions. First, I looked at the top 15 digital assets by market capitalization. Now, there are thousands of digital assets, but the top 15 account for about 86% of the market. Second, I look to what the commissions themselves have said about those 15 digital assets. Not a chairman, not a commissioner, but the commission itself, because only the commission can speak for itself. Based on my review and looking at CFTC and SEC enforcement actions, it appears that the CFTC has asserted that seven of the top 15 digital assets are commodities. These seven digital assets are some of the largest, accounting for approximately 76% of the digital asset market. The SEC, as a commission, has never challenged any of those CFTC determinations, some of which have been around for years. Instead, the SEC, in an enforcement action, has asserted that only one of the top 15 digital assets is a security, and that digital asset currently accounts for about 2% of the market. 76 to 2. 76% a commodity, 2% a security, and the rest of the top 15, about 8% undetermined. I don't think that should be very surprising because the market division between swaps regulated by the, S the CFTC and securities-based swaps regulated by the SEC is about 90% swaps for the CFTC and 10% security-based swaps for the SEC. So I conclude where I began. There's a significant regulatory gap in federal spot market regulation of digital assets because the large majority of digital asset spot market activity falls outside the regulatory jurisdiction of the CFTC and the SEC. Thank you. Obviously, there's some people coming into the Biden administration who agree with that. You know, if it is true that Michael Barr is my successor at the OCC, I think he's likely to have more of a thesis similar to mine on this. He has a background having uh, spent some time on the Ripple Advisory Board, for example. Uh, and on the other hand, Secretary Yellen has said some relatively skeptical things about uh, about the asset class. So I don't think it's a partisan issue. I think it's more about who's a, who's a tech adopter and who's an innovator versus who isn't. Brian, speaking of Ripple, you worked at Coinbase, you worked in the government, albeit for under a year. So tell us, is XRP a security, yes or no? <laughs> well, you know, these are complicated questions and matters of pending litigation, so who can say? But here, here's what I would tell you, though, which I think is the most important issue about XRP, and that is there is a difference, okay? There's a difference between the way in which an asset is distributed and the nature of the asset at a given moment in time. And I think the issue in Ripple that gets lost in all of the discussion is whatever happened in the original distribution of XRP tokens, you know, 10 years ago, and whether that was or wasn't an unregistered securities offering, that's what the courts will decide. That's a different question from whether XRP today is a security. And the SEC itself has said that assets can change their nature over time as they achieve utility and as they achieve decentralization. So if I had to make a prediction, I'll just make a quick prediction. And that is that there is a settlement to be done here somewhere. And the settlement has to do with the distribution of the tokens so that existing token holders can continue to trade them and find value in them the way that they do. Time, so we appreciate you coming on the show. No less, though. Yes or no? Any settlement on the table? We've said uh, publicly since day one that this case settles if the SEC makes clear that Ripple sales and distributions of XRP and XRP's trading in the secondary market does not constitute a security. If they're willing to acknowledge that, the case settles and settles very, very quickly. Without that acknowledgement, we have no choice to continue to defend the case. And we're defending the case, not only on behalf of Ripple, we're really defending this case on behalf of the entire crypto industry. Because if we're not gonna get clarity through regulatory rulemaking and we're not, we're getting
deliberate um, confusion brought upon the market. If we're not going to get clarity through the legislative process, and there's some good faith efforts to make that work. The only other place that where you can get clarity is through the judicial process, the litigation process, and that's where we're going to get it. The decision gets bigger and bigger. So I just want you to think about those, those of you out there who are thinking about this. Why hasn't she ruled yet? What I doubt very seriously that Judge Torres has ever felt the pressure that she's feeling right now. Ripple is sending, hey, Judge, look what the judge in Voyager said. Look what the Judge Gorsuch at the Supreme Court said about fair notice. All of these things are happening after. She's getting more information. Look at the SEC's conduct. Look at Binance. Look at the CFTC. All of this stuff is happening in the background where you got guys like me saying the regulatory clarity is going to come from her. You got the library decision. You don't think she's aware of all this. So this decision is as big of a decision that this judge has ever faced. Think about it. What other decision is as big as this decision when it comes to global trade and finance in modern history? I've said before that this case is the most significant non-fraud SEC enforcement action since 1946. So at that kind of pressure, personally, I don't blame Judge Torres for being very careful of how she words this decision. Because A, if it goes against Ripple, she knows it's going up to a conservative court and if it's for ripple she has to justify it and all those things so just be patient we're almost at the end everybody have a great night see you to allow every financial institution on the planet to settle with every other financial institution in a compatible jurisdiction in any asset in seconds for less than a penny just, just think about this you, you anyone who's made a payment knows that we're nowhere near that today but imagine every financial institution settling with every other financial institution in seconds for less than a penny, any asset. That's fundamentally transformative. We have the technology to do it. Now we just need to figure out how to drive the adoption. And of course, there's all the challenges with there's incumbents, there's regulation, there's inertia. You know, there's the big, big, there's big players who are really trying to defend, you know, if you're at the, if you're one of the largest banks in the world, you you want to push pause or stop on technology because <laughs> because you're you're in, you're in the lead. So of course, like you know, you say you love technology, but obviously you know you wish you could. Right, stop. Let's talk about XRP. Are you referring to Ripple? Because here's some interesting news. This just came up. You were ranting, so I googled this. Hold on. Millions of XRP grabbed by whales. Important XRP versus Bitcoin signal appears. You know, I ran into a. Uh, person out in uh, where were we i ran it where were we ran into a guy out in north carolina who was a crypto guy and he believes xrp is the next big thing a lot of people call it bankster coin why do you think xrp is going to be in play here in the future uh, evidently some whales agree with you here because it's not controllable at a central location like wall street uh, when the sec went after ripple to hamstring them to tie their hands behind their back to freeze their progress i thought well there's a winner just like reggie middleton they froze him they didn't make any progress at all in the 16 months when they froze reggie middleton he continued in development the only information technology software i shouldn't say that the only digital finance software development that Wall Street is expert in is fraud for derivatives, round robin bidding, for algorithm trading, for insider New York Fed trading. Wall Street is expert at software for fraud. They're not expert for software development on the new digital highway infrastructure on-ramp, off-ramp, trading window, they're not expert at any of that. They don't know jack shit about that. In fact, a year ago, Wall Street started advertising open source fairs. Come join open source. And it was fraud. Again, fraud, that's all they know, it's fraud. It was fraud for people to give their software for crypto and digital finance development, software development, 
and give it to Wall Street, which then put it under their intellectual property as a gift. Wall Street is good at fraud. Okay, Ripple cannot be corralled. Ripple is about to move its headquarters out of the United States. Ripple has already cut deals with a couple of different BRICS major nations. By that I mean Russia, China, Iran. Those three countries are going to run the BRICS. They should really do something about Brazil and fix that. I'd love to see Russia, Chinese influence to fix that, but probably not going to happen anytime soon. <clears throat> Russia announced that in view of the swift obstruction, they were going to temporarily use XRP. They're going to use it with all their former Soviet republics, probably on a creeping basis, Eastern Europe, probably on a certain basis with China and the, and the, uh, the Pacific Rim, but maybe mostly the Yuan. Look for the Yuan to have a handoff to the Chinese gold-backed digital currency. Look for Russia to use XRP and the UAE dirham as caretaker temporary payment systems. And I, I believe, and this is the opinion of, of a, a really smart digital colleague of mine, the Russians are going to use XRP to drive up the gold price and put a hot poker up the Anglo-American banker's arse. That's why... I I think XRP is going to go up. The Russians are backing it. There's a big boycott against the dollar. There's going to be alternatives. Okay, you know, this is going to sound a little outrageous and ironic, but I'm just going to say it. What we might find <clears throat> is that the Asian exporters who take their goods to ship them to Long Beach and other West Coast ports, they might demand XRP during all the different battles and arguments and conflict over whose CBDC will rule, I think XRP is going to run through with a chariot and get a lot of the global trade. And the Americans might have to pay XRP to get their Samsung televisions and their Hondas and their Toyotas and their Hitachi computers. How are we going to pay for that? They're not going to take our Fed coin and we won't want to use the Chinese CBDC. I think the compromise is going to be XRP and it's going to be glorious. It's going to be hilarious. I tell you, we're in for some very serious chaos, Sean. Thanks for everyone tuning in to today's show. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and turn on those notifications. This is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor, but please let everyone know that the High Vibe said that the Bulls are getting ready to run out the damn gates. Yeah.